he followed me from windows server i moved to uh, chan channel 9 he joined me there too and yeah. then he he left i think yeah they yeah, are very interesting so i know uh, in every other country if you go to a microsoft office as soon as you will enter the microsoft office no matter which country it is even china india europe anywhere or us it's mm-hmm. same microsoft you feel you are you cannot see any difference it's a microsoft but obviously there is a difference of culture and all so what i mm-hmm. wonder hope is have you seen any difference in terms of managing team uh, between us and africa uh, of culture or any different challenges you are coming across yeah i would say there's a number of of differences um something that's really hard to do is like i need to sit down and separate the differences that are because this is a remote team and mm-hmm. the differences that are because this is a team in a different country because there's there's differences due to the time zone and differences due to culture and differences due to economic conditions and and other situational things and like it's sort of you have to catalog all of the different things um together if you're thinking about how how the team continues to operate and be effective and impactful mm-hmm. um i think the time zone challenges are probably the most prevalent um even with covid and with folks working from home one of the things that actually it's probably a mix of time zone and culture one of the things that i've noticed is um a lot of folks um if you're not careful about talking about working hours a lot of folks might assume that they're expected to work the same hours as headquarters redmond and so they're mm-hmm. like so that means i start work at 2 and i don't get off till like you know late at night and that's something that you have to consciously know that if you don't tell folks they sh- they shouldn't do that um it'll just naturally happen um there's a lot of um need to encourage folks to ask questions and not feel like they might get in trouble or that they're expected to know the answer depending on the environment that they've worked in before it's that 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 aspect of it is quite subjective mm-hmm. um it it depends on the background how much like actual tech um large tech company experience they've had versus for example working in a non tech company as a software engineer the culture in particularly in smaller non tech startup like companies might not be quite what microsoft's culture is mm. um and i think that that's something that i'm con- con- conscious continuously conscious about um as well and mm-hmm. uh, microsoft microsoft also makes it um uh i i think makes it a little bit more challenging in a very fun way which is microsoft has its own unique um culture that in some sense excuse me in some sense it's like hard to even like articulate but i think the the thing about it is um microsoft's culture of a growth mindset and uh inclusiveness and things like we don't just care um i like the way alex puts it we don't want a team of superstars we want a superstar team mm. and it's not about the individual it's okay to ask for help when you're blocked on something you're not being measured on how well you do without asking for help um mm-hmm. and and in reality it's all about us succeeding together these are things that sometimes even even folks i've hired in the us might not be used to that sort of culture um but it's something that uh coming here again probably also because we have a predominance of early in career engineers on my team mm-hmm. um it's it like that culture is a little bit requires a little bit more effort to uh infuse in the team and right. um I think that it's been it's been fun because it's like nobody is upset when they realize that's what it's like at Microsoft. This Microsoft culture is definitely a much happier place to be. Um mm. but it takes a while for folks to realize that um as a manager really you can actually come and ask me for anything. Like if I schedule a meeting for you earlier than you're planning on coming into work that day, it's okay to say can we reschedule the meeting. Right. Um and that's something that if you if you just assume when you go into an environment that folks are going to know that then you're going to be putting folks in an uncomfortable position yes yes yeah this is one main thing i notice between you know asian countries and us in us the beauty of i think the education system or the mindset here is there is uh, no fear of authority in fact it's encourage right that you question your manager and ask yep. your leadership why and why are you doing and that's something i noticed that in other part of the world uh, sometimes you have to push people uh, they don't yeah. speak against manager on or things like that 
Yeah, I mean, I growing up, I, I distinctly remember the kind of quotes from like either seniors in in, in my sec boarding school, secondary school, of like, do as I say, not as I do, obey before right. you complain, sort of like, there's a very different way of getting things done in some places. And depending on the culture and the environment someone's exposed to, they may need to like realize that we do things differently at Microsoft. And I'm always happy to work with anyone who feels like I'm, I'm not comfortable with that. Um, mm. Because like I, I distinctly remember in every one on one that I had when I first when we first started the ADC, I actually would ask folks practice right now. Say no to me. Like, uh, tell me this is too much. Just say it. Just let the words out. Like say this is too much. You're asking too much of me. Just say it right now and and get comfortable like right. telling me that because if you're not comfortable with it, then when it really matters, you're probably not going to do it. Right. Um, and and I I distinctly remember it. Um, one person on the team, she was like, you know what? Someday I'll be able to do that. Not today. I can't, I can't say that to you. Wow. That's and, such and, a nice and, trick of yours. Yeah. And, and, you know, I don't know where I came up with that. I, it felt like this, um, you know, I'll have to go and ask Dooney. He might've been, it might've been his, his idea, uh -huh. um, but he was definitely one of the folks who um, throughout the entire process, um, as we uh, thought about opening the office here, we were, we were very, very conscious of wanting to be culturally sensitive and aware Mm -hmm. um, which I think has been really, really helpful in trying to have the right culture, create the right culture. Um, it's always a challenge to go into a, a country that Microsoft isn't in and say, hey, we want to bring our culture here of engineering, mm -hmm. because you're, you're, you can't just go in and just like drop your culture there. No one's, True. that's not how it works. So yeah. you're actually coming in and infusing your culture through your values and the things that um, you talk about and, and and the way people treat one another. And that's the that's something that's been pretty fun to do. Right, right. And I can see that, you know, 400 people today, uh, but it multiplies by many, many fold because they take this culture, this thinking, this uh, growth mindset from office back to mm -hmm. home and everybody get affected. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, it's that's that's yeah, that's exactly the thing that I, I love about it. The idea is that eventually like the ecosystem starts to like appreciate this culture and, and these values as well. And it sort right. of spreads in a, in a really nice way. Right. I, another thing I'm wondering in Nigeria, are you uh, is there other people from different other countries because of Microsoft that transferred some people, say, from France or from Germany? Is that kind of cross pollination happening yet or? Uh, there, there's a bit of that happening. So, okay. so Nigeria is part of ECOWAS, the Economic Community of uh, West African States, and so it's relatively straightforward for someone from Ghana or Cote d'Ivoire or Senegal or any other ECOWAS country to be able to come here. And mm -hmm. we've actually had a couple of folks. I think the most recent hire on the team is actually from Cote d'Ivoire, and mm -hmm. um, he 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 got to um, he got to Nigeria in February. Um, it, things things sort of slowed down because we've been we've been doing this for two years and then right, we've and been COVID in it hit, yeah. about six months and COVID hit. But right. the general plan is for this to be a uh, continent covering yeah. effort and to bring folks from engineering folks from all over. That's one of the things I love about this region is like the incredible uh, uh, the diversity that's packed really densely. Is right. like across this continent, there's all kinds of diversity, and being able to hire folks from anywhere is part of the idea. Right, right. 